Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. Today's video is gonna break the norm of just me talking in the office here. We're gonna get out and go see a mass timber job site, but there's something unusual about this mass timber job site. I gotta get going. I'll explain that along the way. Let's go. All right, so what's unique about this particular mass timber project? The project I'm going through today is the Fairbanks Museum. It's receiving a about a 10,000 square foot mass timber addition. The project is located here in Vermont. And the unique thing about this project is the particular species of wood that is being used in the mass timber products themselves. Now, typically mass timber products are produced with wood species that are local to the area in which the fabrication and production facility is located. Out west, that results in a lot of Douglas fir, spruce pine fir south, even western hemlock in the southeast of the U.S. that results in a lot of southern yellow pine, and in northeast Canada, a lot of spruce. Now, here in New England, especially in the state of Maine, there used to be a very robust pulp and paper industry, but over the past decade, that industry has really been decimated with a lot of mill closures. And what that has resulted in is a lot of excess softwood lumber available for use in other applications. Through the efforts of a dedicated group of professionals here in the region and through funding received by a USDA One Innovations grant, over the past few years, there has been a concentrated effort to look at the use of locally grown New England sourced softwood species for use in mass timber production, specifically CLT production, and specifically species such as Eastern Hemlock. Now the project that I'm going to today is the first practical, tangible application of that multi-year effort because the CLT that's being installed at the Fairbanks Museum project here in Vermont is a Eastern Hemlock based CLT panel. The Eastern Hemlock timbers were harvested in Northern New Hampshire, sent to a mill in Southern Vermont, milled into two by dimensional lumber, then sent down to Smartland's facility in Alabama, made into CLT panels, and then just about a week ago, shipped back up here to Vermont for installation at the job site. This is a bit of a proof of concept, essentially proving the fact out after this multi-year effort and certification, ANSI PRG 320 certification, to prove that Eastern hemlock is a viable species for use in CLT production. So today we're gonna go check out the job site, see the Eastern hemlock CLT, the first of its kind really in the world, and show you around the job site a bit. So let's go. So here you can see the Eastern hemlock CLT panels above us here. And then we actually have a spruce based glue lamb beam and column structure. You can see the uh, detailing used is this single glue lamb column with a double glue lamb beam straddling that. And then the CLT panels. And then you can see a small, about a six inch wide chase. And this is where the sprinkler lines are going to run to be up concealed up in that space. One of the challenges with this particular project was the head-to-head -head height of the existing building and having to match up. As you can see here, we're working up against the existing building. So maximizing the amount of headspace while minimizing the floor-to-floor -floor was one of the project constraints. Using a five-ply CLT floor panel, you see the grain of the Eastern Hemlock. One of the differences that you see on this project is that currently the CLT panels are not finished. They don't have any type of sealant or coating on them, whereas the glue lamb beams do. That was just a factor of coming from different fabrication facilities. So even though these are two different species, I think in the end, they're actually gonna aesthetically look very similar once there's a, a clear coating of sealant on the underside of these CLT panels here. Already the contrast, I think between the two is subtle, but it does look nice but with that clear coating and sealant on, I think they're gonna look actually quite similar. But 
design team on this project, as you can see, chose to go with more of an exposed hardware look at the connections with the exposed steel plates and exposed bolts that you see here. This was a bit of a nod to the heritage of Vermont timber framing, where those types of connections are more common in exposing the large diameter bolts as opposed to the more common connections in mass timber nowadays with small diameter self-tapping screws. As you can see here, the lateral system is a diagonal tube shape, HSS shape. The detail used at the base of the glue lamp columns is, you can see this steel box shape with a standoff base to elevate the glue lamp member off of the concrete slab once it's poured still provide some vertical adjustability in the, in the vertical setting of that column itself on the concrete pier that it's supported on. behind me here the project is using a mix of steel brace frames and then steel diagonal rods to resist the lateral forces in the building we're currently in the basement of the addition the existing building is off to my left here and as I mentioned there were those constraints with working within the floor to floor heights of the existing building that's actually one of the main reasons that mass timber was seen as a viable option as actually providing benefits for this project was because of the low floor to floor heights within the existing building they needed a very thin structure, something that could span across the entire width of the addition while being a very thin structure to fit within the existing floor-to-floor -floor heights while giving adequate, adequate headroom in the addition itself. <laughs> Now standing a couple hundred feet behind the addition project, there is the material laydown area and you can see some of the mass timber products here currently wrapped in a laydown area at the job site. With currently with materials to cover the products, classic wrapping on the materials themselves. Some of the members are unwrapped as those are the ones being installed today, so they're being prepped for the connections. Uh, but otherwise, materials are covered with a plastic wrapping material and those are generally taken off right before the members are erected. Well, there you have it, folks. Innovative use of Eastern Hemlock, a local species here in Vermont, in the use of mass timber on a mass timber addition to an existing museum. So several unique aspects to this one. I thank you for tagging along with me today on this video and this Timber Talk Tuesday. I thank you for making it to the end of this video. And until next time, we'll see you later.